coming home to get my package. I am so psyched about this. So if any of you watched my previous video, you would know how obsessed with A Little Life I Am by Hanya Yanagihara. Best book of last year, best book I've ever read. It spoke to me, it spoke to my soul. I was torn apart and shredded into a million pieces. But I've picked myself up since then and I am ready for another one. So I'm gonna do a little unboxing of this book. I'm so excited. I've got my handy dandy box cutter. Okay, let's get into it. Also, welcome to my jungle. <laughs> Almost paradise. We're knocking on heaven's door. Oh my God, I'm so excited. It is a thick one. Can we, okay, first of all, the matte, the matte paper, it is, it is just tender to the touch. Don't we love that? Okay, we have a little, a little gold um, embossing there. And can we just, oh my God, look, those bees or rats? Look on the side, little tiny mosquitoes or some kind of insect bug. I am so excited to find out what those mean. Oh my God. Okay, wait, we just got to figure out how many pages is this baby? 700. <laughs> my emotions are going to get destroyed. Okay, well, I am going to start reading this. I also haven't finished a book yet this year and it's currently uh, January 11th or 12th or something like that. So I'm reading four books, why not add another one? I'm gonna take you along on my journey whilst I read this. So come along for the ride. It's gonna be one filled with a lot of tears, a lot of emotion, a lot of drama, can't wait. So I just finished filming this vlog and I just wanted to let you know before getting into the rest of the video, this is a completely unbiased review of this book. Now I am now finished with the book and I have not looked at any reviews of the book. I have not looked at any booktubers reviews of the book, any interviews Hanya Yanakahara has done. This is a completely unbiased reading vlog and opinion of what I thought of this book. Um, I'm very interested to see what other booktubers think and what other people have thought about this book. If you like Hanya Ganakahara, feel free to give this a thumbs up because same. And yeah, let's get into the vlog. All right, so I have since showered, I have made myself a cup of tea and, oh, this is really freaking hot. Okay, I have to be honest with you. I read the synopsis for this book probably six months ago. I have no idea what it's about and I don't really wanna know what it's about because I just wanna go into it blind. Oh, I cannot wait. I was already texting my friends about this because we're like obsessed with the little life. Oh, there's a map. It looks like it's a map of the US. So I don't know if this is about like immigration to the US or I am not sure. Let's do it, here we go. I read the first chapter and I had no idea. I was so confused. I had no idea what I was reading. And then I was like, okay, maybe I should read the synopsis. So I read the synopsis and it made a lot more sense. <laughs> so this is an alternate history uh, novel and it follows three different timelines. One in 1893, one in 1993, and then one in 2093. Yeah, I was very confused. I'm continuing to read and I'll give you an update later. Hello everyone. So it is a few days later since I filmed the intro to this video. I am like about 90 pages into this right now. I'm on chapter 10 of the first book and I love it. It took me a while to get into the writing style. Okay, so the first part of this book follows the characters set in 1893. And those characters are set in the free states, which is basically New England. So you're following the Bigham family, who is a very rich family in New York City. You're following the eldest son in this family. His name is David. You're kind of getting alluded to the fact that like he has had some very severe depression, which I don't know if it's going to be explored. So it's really interesting in this part of alternate history that same-sex marriage is well received by society. It is not something that was controversial at the time. David, the oldest, is basically trying, well he's not trying, his family is trying to get him to 
arrange marriage for him. Um, and he's having a very hard time. Like I said, he's like a lot of stuff has alluded to the fact that he has been severely depressed earlier in his life and he, he has a hard time connecting with people. The writing style was harder for me to get into so far. Um, I think it's because we're set in this like earlier time period. It almost reads like a classic novel right now. So I find that I have trouble reading like Jane Austen or something like that. Like the writing style is like hard to catch on to. And I feel like that's kind of how it has been at first, but it still is like, ugh, her writing's just amazing. Once I kind of like my brain kind of got like used to the way that she's writing this first part, it it's a lot easier now. But I, I literally spent like two hours reading the first few chapters of it because I, my, I had to like keep rereading and rereading and rereading to be able to understand what was going on. But so far, I really, really enjoy it. I feel very connected to the characters that I'm reading so far. And it's only, I'm only like 90 pages into it. I don't know if I have five star feels yet, but definitely like high four star feels. So yeah, things are going well. Really liking it and can't wait to keep reading. It's a few days later. You know, this book, it's not going slow for me in particular. I've just been really busy. <laughs> okay, so I finished the first part and I wanted to give my thoughts on it before I continue. I really, really liked the first part. So like I said before, this book is broken up into three different stories, right? And you're left feeling very, uns like not unsettled. Well, a little bit unsettled after the first story. Um, I don't know if that's really a spoiler or not, but it leaves you just feeling kind of like, what? But I, I very much expected that. That's that's how this author, that's how Hanya works. She does not leave you feeling satisfied. Overall, the story was very enjoyable. I like, it was, the chapters were a little bit quicker, so it was like easy to get through. Again, just the way she portrays relationships and like human emotion, the way humans think and process emotions and feelings, it's really, really beautiful. And you, you really feel for these characters. So now I'm on to the second part, right? And the second part, it's interesting. This isn't really a spoiler, but all of the characters throughout each of the stories have the same names. The same characters are named the exact same things in the next book. Um, so it is kind of confusing because you have to reframe the character in your brain. Just the way that the stories are connected, you can already see that there is a common thread between these two stories. I'm gonna keep reading it this weekend. So I'm gonna power through tonight, see how much I can read of this, and hopefully we'll finish it soon. But yes, we're in the 1993 era right now and it's she really paints a great picture of that timing. And also it's cool because when you're in the 1893 setting, the language is very early American, right? And now it's much more modern. So I'm reading this second second book. And one thing I did notice is that whenever David speaks, David is the main character, he does not have quotations around his words. Whereas every single other character in this story does have quotations. And I don't know the significance of that yet, but I'm definitely sure that it's very intentional. So I'm interested to see how this plays out. Very, very interesting so far, though. This story is more focused on David and his father thus far. And the relationship between his father and son is very different than I think I've ever seen portrayed in a story. His father is very, very timid. Uh, his father was bullied as a child and, you know, David really looks up to his father, but his father clearly has a lot of trauma from his past that I don't think he's dealt with. And I think he wants to live up to his father, but not in the same way that his father had lived, uh, if that makes sense. Just an interesting note. We'll keep going. Literally 6 p.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> and I just made myself a coffee. A little ad say action going on. Anyone else do this? I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight, but that's fine. Who cares? And you've done it again. <laughs> okay, so I just finished the second part. I literally didn't even finish the last part. I'm in the second part. That was really, really sad and like really beautiful, but also not beautiful. I think that that second part really, really spoke to me because, okay, so the premise of that second story was about this young man 
he lives in New York. He's in a relationship. You're kind of like hearing about his past family or like not his past family. You're hearing about his family and his dad and like he doesn't really talk to his dad anymore and something happened and you don't really know what happened but then obviously you find out what happened. I think like the biggest feeling that I got from reading that section, like you know when you realize that your parents are human and it's really like humbling to you to like re like understand all the things that they've done for you? Well, that was like the feeling that I had throughout this entire chapter or entire book. And like, oh, that's something that gets me really emotional. So <laughs> Hanya, you just, you get it. <laughs> And there are so many, like, I, I think, honestly, I enjoyed the first book more than the second book. But that second section of the second book was like, wow, really, damn. And she, some lines that she has are just freaking killer. But hiding hasn't stopped things from happening. The only thing it prevented was eventually being found. Are you kidding me? You can really see the thread between the first and second books. They're not, like, direct replica stories but it's the same themes going from one book to the second book and they're, I'm, like, I'm guessing it's going to be the same theme going from the second book to the third book as well um you know it's really talking about like what does what does paradise actually mean for us like in reality when we, when we say oh i'm looking for paradise i'm looking for this fantasy right what does that actually mean and in reality what does that actually look like as humans like is paradise even real and that's kind of what she's exploring and it's becoming pretty clear it's it's not all it's cracked up to be i think another theme that's kind of coming through with this is you may think that a paradise is out there like some material dream is going to give you all of the the paradise that you're looking for like oh me moving to x y and z or me moving to this place is going to give me the paradise that i want but okay when you're there and you're you're experiencing that is that actually giving you deep to your core happiness is is it the material things that matter or is it the relationships and the people that you're with that actually matter i don't know this book has a lot to do with family too like a lot of like of like strong family bonds are very high in this so oh wow can't wait to finish this i have a feeling i'm gonna cry again so love that yeah i'm probably about to go to bed because i gotta go to work tomorrow but i have just i had a rough day at work today and i was just like i just want to be in my feels and that that got me in my feels so to do like a little car thing like this a few days ago i had my heating on and you literally couldn't hear anything so we're giving this another try with the heat off so i'm a little cold right now but it's okay so i am a little bit over halfway done with the third portion of to paradise i so far the third book is my least favorite it's just okay so it's all about a pandemic and I have been deliberately avoiding pandemic literature during the pandemic because it's, it's just too much right now. I think the first book is my favorite so far. This third book, like I said, talking about a pandemic, right? But it's like very dystopian in the sense that like, basically New York City is segregated into these different zones and like you can't cross into each other's zones and you can't travel out of the country and like the government is like super super observant and in your face about everything like it feels like it's like a little bit like concentration camp vibes which don't love um and I also don't think the writing is as strong as the other two and maybe that's just I'm still kind of getting to know the characters more, but I feel like I was, I felt more connected to the the other two stories than I do with this one. Not getting five star feels from this book yet, which I think is due to the fact that it's basically three different stories in one. And I don't feel as connected to the characters just in general because you're only with them for 150 pages or 100, 200 pages or so. All in all, her writing is 
always incredible. There are quotes like here and there throughout the entirety of the book that just hit the core. But I don't know, this just isn't hitting like Little Life did. <laughs> and that makes me sad. It's not like I am not enjoying it, I definitely am, but it's not to the same extent that I enjoyed A Little Life. And didn't really enjoy that but like you know what I'm saying when it like something hits you in your feels really emotionally it's not doing that same thing for me so um kind of sad but I am probably going to finish this if not tonight then tomorrow and hopefully I'll give you my final thoughts on everything it is time to finish this book after literally a month okay I have like 130 pages left odds I finish it tonight are so low don't dunch me for drinking in bed. I'm comfortable. That's what matters. All right, just finished um, part six of the last book. This book makes me really, really think about my life. <laughs> the whole theme of the book is finding out what does paradise actually look like and what does that actually mean? And it just like makes you think of like all the times that like, I don't know, you, th you thought something was going to be so great and then it turns out to be something that it's totally you didn't expect at all and it's really like sad that it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to i don't think that's a spoiler but this book has just made me question a lot of things it's pretty good i have like 100 pages left now so okay now it's time to finish it i have like 80 pages left we're gonna do this we're gonna finally finish it I feel like this book has given me a lot to think about but i like don't even know what to say okay first of all just thinking of the book as like a whole okay huge just strong themes in general each story truly connects to the other one and i feel like the third story is a complete circle like it's just a full circle from the whole book which i really liked but the third story was my least favorite for sure like i said the third story is about a pandemic I'm not in that place. I'm not in that place. It's just depressing AF and I'm just like already depressed with the pandemic itself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't love it. I didn't love it. This book, I'm sure will maybe sit with me. I liked the threads that ran through each of the stories. I did, but like, I think I like a book more that is completely about one set of characters. So you get really attached to them. Like I really genuinely appreciated this book, but I didn't, I was not reaching for it, honestly. Like it was a really genuine in like good piece of literature but I just it didn't transcend me like a little life did I think I'm probably gonna give it like a 3.5 or 4 star I think my favorite book out of the three was the first one you find out right away that you're the main character you're following is a, is a character who is very very naive and extremely innocent and that is a thread that is followed throughout the entire book each story has a character like that and it's painful to read. It is so, it is hard to read because you're seeing everyone around that person just try and fight for them so much and try and help them. And like, I think that was like one of the things that really stuck out to me because I feel like at some times in my life, I have felt like that super innocent person, right? But then I also at other times, I felt like I've been on the other side where you're like trying to like protect someone who's so innocent too. I think it's a very difficult thing to portray in a book. In A Little Life, it was the same way. Other things I liked about the book, I did like the three timelines. I thought she like set the world very well. I don't know. I think my total rating is probably gonna be like three and a half slash four stars just because I don't think it gave me that like I said that transcendent experience that I am looking for would I recommend this book I don't think it's a must read if you like literary fiction I think you would enjoy it but I definitely don't think that this is a book that everyone needs to read by any means this was not a book that I could have put down like I definitely could take a step away from it and for the fact that it took me like a month to read clearly I wasn't as engaged as I was hoping to be overall glad I read it Kind of happy to be done. All right, so that concludes my reading vlog of Two Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. 
I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave a comment down below if you've made it this far, letting me know your thoughts. If you haven't gotten a chance to subscribe yet, that would be great too. Come join the community. I love having you here. I love reading everyone's comments and stuff. Yeah, be on the lookout for more reading vlogs. I'm hoping to do some more. Have a great rest of your day, you guys. Peace. Bye. Peace and love.